Looking for Clarity. I'm Emily, and I am so looking forward to spending some time with you writers to talk about finding clarity in our writing by discovering your writing rhythm, creating a simple plan, and finally finding your writing people. Now, if this is your very first time joining Hope Writers for an online training, we would love to hear about it in the comments. Our team is standing by to say hello and to cheer you on. And listen, even if you've been here before, we would love to say hello to you. Tell us where you're calling in from, where you're watching us from. As we come together from all over the country, even all over the world, I want to acknowledge that we are always in various states of transition standing at thresholds of hellos, goodbyes, beginnings, and endings. So wherever you are coming from, I want you to know you're in the right place. You're among friends. You're safe here. We're going to have a lot of fun. So definitely take a moment to introduce yourself there in the comments, and we will be sure to say hello to you. Well, in the midst of the natural transitions and responsibilities of life, it's highly possible that your writing dreams goals or plans may have been set aside. Hopefully you're here to see if you can wake those back up again and find some clarity for your writing life. That is my intention during our time together. Well, I'll just begin with this. So we all understand this is a safe space. This is a screenshot of a photo and a caption that I posted on my personal Instagram account. Um, And you can see how incredibly productive I am. I'll just give you a quick second to read that. As you can see, my super productive work time here ended with stare out the window, clean the window, open the window, climb out the window. You are not alone if you can relate. And if you are unable to focus, that is what I'm trying to say. And we would love it if you just put a little me, M-E in the comments, if you can relate to sitting down to get some work done, whether that be writing work or just regular human person work, and you just can't seem to focus. You are in good company here, my friend, and we're so glad that you showed up with us here. But here we are, and we're here together, and we are going to practice focusing. We have some dedicated time together, and I want to invite you to be here with me and your fellow writers. Let's all be here together. I want to respect your time, and I invite you to respect your time. And that means go ahead and put your phone on airplane mode or listen, just turn it off as long as you're not watching us on your phone. Um, But give yourself the gift of being here for the love of clarity. Turn off the notifications, close out your tabs, ignore everything you can possibly ignore. Because here's the thing. If there's one thing I'm pretty sure I know about us writers is that we're actually pretty good at ignoring things. But the problem is We ignore the wrong things. We ignore our giftedness. We ignore our calling. We ignore our desire to process the world with words and then offer them to people. So let today be the day that you turn all that on its head. Instead, let's practice ignoring the stuff that doesn't matter, the notifications, the distractions, the doubts, and instead tune into your writer's heart. There's no telling what could happen. Mary Oliver says the most regretful people on earth are those who felt the call to creative work, who felt their own creative power restive and uprising and gave to it neither power nor time. Well, in the span of about the next hour, that's not going to be you. So I tip my invisible hat to you for giving your creative call, both power and time right now today, I'll work to make it worth it. We know you may have a lot going on and the fact that you chose to spend an hour with me is such a gift. So thank you for that. And listen, if you stick around until the end, I'll share a surprise and a fast action bonus. Oh my, just like my friends on the wizard of Oz in our short time together, we'll talk about why it's sometimes hard to get into a writing rhythm. We'll talk about what's keeping you from making progress with your writing. And we'll talk about some simple ideas to help you take one step forward. We're gonna talk about some of the hard parts of being a writer. I'm gonna guess if you're taking time out of your day to show up for a training, chances are you have some desire to make a go of it as a writer. I respect you enough to be honest about what it actually takes to do this work well, and that includes a conversation about money. 
I actually don't think enough working writers are talking about money, further causing new writers to be confused about what expectations are, and they're really unsure about what it takes to do this work well. And that's not fair, but before we get there... I want to introduce myself. If you don't know me, I'm Emily. Professionally, I'm an author of five books and one guided journal. Four of those are national bestsellers. And I host a podcast called The Next Right Thing. I'm also one of the co-founders of Hope Writers, which is a community that we call the kindest place for writers on the internet. So yes, all of those things are true of me, but what is also true is this. I'm a mom of three, although only two are pictured here. That photo on the left is from 2004 with my twin girls, just a few months after they were born. We look a little sleepy. And then the photo on the right was from about a year ago on their 16th birthday. So yes, I am a mom. I'm a wife. I'm also a learner and a teacher. I'm a doubter and a believer. We are all of us, a lot of things. Often we're walking contradictions, which sometimes looks like people who want to write, but then we get really scared. We might get brave for a minute, but then we get quiet. We want to write a book, but then we change our minds because we think, well, everything's already been said. Well, here's my goal for this workshop. As promised, I want to help you find clarity as a writer, both for your writing work, as well as your writing life. And how we're going to do this is very simple. By the end of this workshop, my goal is that you'll be able to first name what's holding you back from your best writing. Next, I want to help you envision where you want to go. You may have shown up here with a vague idea of what you want from your writing, but you haven't taken the time or given yourself permission to sit with it long enough to name and visualize it. Finally, and most importantly, by the end of our time together, I hope you'll have at least one next step to get you there. No matter what kind of writing you do, whether it's fiction, nonfiction, essay writing, blog writing, if you write for children, teenagers, parents, pastors, women, caregivers, or home educators, it doesn't matter if you want to share your words with a reader, then we want to help you actually set some simple goals towards doing that. Clarity starts with naming. When you're talking with a person, the first thing you want to know is what's your name? The same goes for areas of our life where we need clarity, including in our writing. Naming is often the first step toward progress, and maybe this is the day the naming begins for you. You may have had high hopes for your writing life last year. Maybe you named what you wanted most, but then life happened, and now here you are again looking for clarity. If you can relate to needing some clarity or some focus or some direction in your writing life, I'd love it if you would just type the word me in the comments. As you can see, you are not alone. So let's talk some more about you. This is part of naming for the sake of clarity. Most likely you are experiencing some kind of gap between where you are now and where you want to be. Now this gap might be new for you. Maybe you have had a pretty good writing rhythm in the past, but some type of circumstance has changed and now you're struggling. Or maybe this gap is extremely familiar, all too familiar for you. Maybe you've always struggled with distraction and doubt and a lack of direction and the current state of things in your life. It's just making it worse. In the spirit of being specific and naming things, I'm going to list out five specific reasons why you may have showed up today. And when you see one that resonates with you, put that number or the word in the comment box. Are you ready? Let's go. Put a one in the comments. If this is you, you're a thoughtful writer. You want to find other thoughtful writing people. Maybe you've been writing alone or trying to, but you wish you had a writing buddy or a mentor or somebody that you could ask your questions about writing, publishing, routines, balancing inspiration with deadlines. You would love to have other humans who get this writing thing that you either want to do or have started doing. So getting support from other writers or mentors sounds like just what you need. So put a one or the word connection or support in the comments. If that's you put a two in the comments, if you want to write either a book, curriculum, workbook, speech, but you don't know where to start. This includes you, by the way, if you've already started, but your writing work is hiding in a drawer somewhere, 
or on a hard drive somewhere because you honestly have no idea what to do with it. Or you can still put a two for direction in the comment box if you do have a vague idea of what to do next, writing a book proposal, finding an agent, building your platform, but you're clueless as to which to do first and how to go about it. Moving right along, put a three or the word time in the comment box. Oh, blessed time. Is your schedule completely disrupted these days? Are you having to do your work in a completely different way than ever before? Maybe you want to move from thinking about writing to actually writing, but the time factor is a real thing. So if that's you, put a three in the comment box or the word time. Number four, income. Maybe you're a four, you're a writer, maybe even a working writer, but you feel stuck because either people don't seem to be reading your work or you're not able to make any money from your writing. So you don't feel like you can justify continuing. You want to get paid for your work, but you don't know how, or it hasn't worked so far. This is a big one. Put a four in the comments. If this is why you showed up here today. Finally, number five, confidence. Maybe you have a clear idea of what you want to write, or you have a bit of an idea, but you don't feel like you have what it takes. And honestly, you don't know if you're any good. Maybe the fact that you've thought about writing for so long, but aren't actually doing it. Maybe you're worried that that means you're not a real writer or that something is wrong with you, or maybe you're just not cut out for this. Put a five in the comments if confidence is your biggest struggle and why you showed up here. Well, after leading the Hope Writers community for over five years now, I promise you there isn't one of these that's new, weird, or disqualifying. Not only have we heard it all, but I have personally experienced every single one of these myself, a lack of support, direction, time, income, and confidence. No matter your reason for being here, you belong here, writer. You are not the one exception. If you wait until conditions are perfect, you'll never write a thing. That's from Andrew Peterson. And listen, here's one thing I know for sure. Even though resources may be lacking and things are always less than perfect, the truth is you could talk yourself out of writing every day for the rest of your life. And if you do that, No one will ever hear about the grief that you've lived through, that story of hope that you're living right now, or the pages you've written that tell about love, forgiveness, family connection. You have lessons, poems, essays, and stories of hope to tell, and we don't want those to be kept silent. So which word did you choose as the reason you showed up here with me today? The reason that resonated with you is most likely the thing you need the most in your writing life right now, support, direction, time, income, confidence. And here's the thing. The truth is what you need most, if you don't get it, can feel like, or actually is your biggest obstacle by naming why you showed up here. You've actually done a lot of work. You've named one of your biggest obstacles to writing progress. Here's a pro tip for you. These may be actually acting as a cover-up for something deeper. The thing that's keeping you from making progress in your writing isn't a single word like time, connection, or money. It's actually a whole story. And you've likely been telling yourself this story your entire life. You may not be making progress in your writing on paper, but I promise you the story you're telling yourself in your head about your writing life, well, that story never stops. We are all of us always telling ourselves a story. Sometimes the story is true. Often the story is untrue. The first step toward progress is about uncovering what is and then reimagining what could be. And it's really difficult to do that all by yourself. That's why at Hope Writers, we will forever sing the anthem of community. Hard stories are best told and lived in the midst of community. Your biggest obstacle is directly tied to the story you're telling yourself in your head. 
Now consider all the stories that always come out when your family gets together, you know, the ones that everybody can recite the ones where, you know, what's going to come next. Think about the kinds of stories that your grandfather always told, or your parents tell that are always sure to get a laugh. And maybe when you were a teenager, those stories had you rolling your eyes because the teller of those stories would exaggerate the facts to make them more funny, more risky, more entertaining, sometimes maybe at your expense. They may not be accurate, but they are shareable and everyone knows the script. Jill Chrisman says the story we think we know has more to do with the telling and retelling than it does memory. In other words, our stories are not necessarily based on fact. They're based on how pass onable they are, how tellable. And when it comes to the stories that we as writers are telling in our own heads, the same rings true. The story we're telling ourselves may have some bit of truth in it, but that doesn't mean that it's a fact. Your biggest obstacle is directly tied to the tellable story you're continuing to tell yourself in your own head. One of the promises of this workshop is that you would be able to discover your writing rhythm. And that starts with naming your biggest obstacle to doing your best work. Imagine driving a car down the highway. You can only find a rhythm as long as the road is clear. It's hard to find a driving rhythm in the middle of town. There's too many stoplights and people and traffic. Well, when it comes to your writing life, that's what you just did. Because as you name the reason why you showed up here, well, that's at least a little bit of a hint to your biggest obstacle in your writing life right now. And that's the first secret. Identify your primary obstacle. And hopefully you've just done that. But by way of example, to share what this might look like. If you're looking for connection and support, that's good. If that's why you showed up, that's what you're looking for. Maybe it's your biggest obstacle. Well, when we talk about the gap between imagining your writing life and actually making progress, this is where we uncover what the gap is, what's in there. Part of the story that you might be telling yourself could be true. I'm totally isolated and I don't know any other writers, but then it starts to turn and you might think I'm all on my own. I'm always going to be on my own and I'm untethered and I don't know what I'm doing. You see how quickly that can spiral. Well, being on her own is a struggle that my friend Meredith knows well. Meredith struggled for years with that voice in her head, telling her that she didn't have what it takes for this work. But, and here's the key, she decided to disagree with that voice. And then she found support in her Hope Writers community. And now her first book that she's holding right there is available in bookstores nationwide. But it started with her believing in herself enough to find her writing people and to count herself worthy to be a writer among them. Meredith is talented and she's dedicated, but here's the thing. She's not any different from you. She simply decided to tell a different story. Let's look briefly at other stories you might be telling yourself. If you're looking for direction in your writing life, one of the stories that might be hanging out beneath the surface is the belief that everyone else knows what they're doing except for me. Or if I take a step, I'm going to wreck it all up. I don't know where to start. What if I do it wrong? I'll probably be stuck in a loop of non-action forever. Writer and speaker Lucretia Berry deeply understood the need for direction. She says, I was completely clueless about where to begin in my author and speaker journey. Shortly after I became a member, I self-published a book and gave a TEDx talk. I have found hope writers to be the friendliest face and space in the wilderness of figuring out how to amplify my voice of hope. Lucretia has gone on to create a membership site where she has thousands of members. She just needed a little bit of direction to get herself going. Well, if you struggle finding the time, this is a matter of both the schedule and the soul. Maybe we don't have time, or maybe we're just afraid if we take the time, that we'll be wasting our time. Or maybe you've been thinking, well, now isn't the time. In fact, tell us in the chat if you really want to prioritize your writing, but you don't think now is the time. So you're just going to wait until later on, maybe this year later or next year later. If that's you, type later in the comments. 
Well, here's another one, that dreaded word money. This could be a real struggle because times are hard for a lot of us. And that is a true story. But the false story is the belief that often accompanies financial difficulty. And that is that we think not only am I not making any money for my writing right now, but I actually think it's impossible for me to make money for my writing at all ever. And then you think, well, I can't possibly prioritize my writing until it makes more money, but maybe no one will ever pay me to write anyway. After all, I'm no expert who would give me money for this. Writer Sarah Frazier could relate to that and never imagined that she could make any money from her writing, but I'm here to tell you, and I have talked to her in person about this. Now she doesn't only make money as a writer, she introduces herself as a writer and so does her husband. And that's a really big deal. Maybe the story you're telling yourself is wanting to write just isn't enough of a reason to actually take it seriously or so much is out there. I don't want to add my words to the noise. Who do I think I am anyway? Do you hear the subtle message? My words are noise. This one's powerful and maybe on some level, this is the story that every writer believes deep down. Who do I think I am? Someone more accomplished should be doing this. And by the way, everything's already been said. If you're worried that you'll be adding your words to the noise, here's another word for the comment box. Type the word noise. Well, if you are one who's typing the word noise, even as I say these words, I have words for you, my fellow writer. Just because someone else has already said it doesn't mean you can't say it too. Think of all the books that have changed your life and then think of all they had in common. Think of all the messages that you have had to hear over and over and over again throughout your life before finally that message sank in. People don't always want new, but they do always want true. You saying it may be the first time someone finally hears it. It's time to write. The first secret to finding clarity in your writing and to establishing a writing rhythm is to identify your biggest obstacle, to name the story that you've been telling yourself about your writing. So that's where we've been standing there on the left side of the gap with your obstacle. Well, I've taught this class several times and I've taught it to literally thousands of writers. And we've asked writers before taking this workshop, hey, when you imagine your writing life one year from now, what do you hope to be true? Well, some of the exact word for word answers that we've received when we've asked that question. Here's one quote, one year from now, I would like to be a full time writer. But do you know what that same writer said? The same writer said, but I don't have time to write. Another one, one year from now, I want to be published. And another said, one year from now, I want what I write to make a difference. But they both admitted, but I don't know where to start. So you see there's a gap between what we want to be true and what currently feels true. Here are those five obstacles that we talked about so far. But of course, you know, and I know there are so many others that could be listed here if you don't see your particular struggle here, I invite you to take some time, maybe when this workshop is over and name your biggest obstacle to your writing. And I'm going to give you three steps to help you do that. First, choose one word that summarizes your current biggest obstacle. Here we talked about support or connection, direction, time, income, and confidence. But for you, it could be your health or the name of a family member who's opposed to your writing, or it could be any number of other things. Name it. Do your best to do so in one word. Secondly, ask yourself, honestly, what's the story behind that? See if you can tease it out. And then finally, determine if that story is true or at least if it's fully true. But I could save you a bit of time right now because really all the obstacles we talked about and even the ones we didn't boil down to one word. We all know it well. That word is fear. If we don't confront it, it will drive every decision that we make, not just in writing, but also in life. I know there are true concerns. I know there are real out of control circumstances that we all face every day. But y'all, I have to tell you, I have been doing this too long and I have watched too many writers persevere through all kinds of obstacles 
to believe for a second that these obstacles make writing impossible. I just don't believe it anymore. Not after what I've seen, not after the stories that I've heard of people overcoming. The human spirit is too strong. The hope within us is too deep. And the creative call is too stunning to really hold writers back. Still, I know that when we're talking about creative work, even the most rational person among us can become a weird version of herself and go into a dark and twisty cavern of self-destruction. I know that sounds dramatic. I also know a lot of you are nodding your heads right now. You are allowed to take up space as a writer in the room. I'm going to say that one again. You are allowed to take up space as a writer in the room. And here's a hint, just like the obstacles, the fear is not going to go away. If we wait until the fear is gone to start writing, we'll never start writing. Elizabeth Gilbert says your fear is allowed in the car, but it doesn't get to drive. It's going to be there anyway. So it's not even a question. If it's allowed, you can't get rid of it. It doesn't get to drive. It doesn't get to hold the map. It doesn't get to choose the snacks. It doesn't ever get to suggest detours. Let your fear ride shotgun. So with that in mind, let's carry on before we make a plan to get to the other side of the gap. First, we have to know where we want to go. By way of review, secret one, identify your primary obstacle, the story you're telling yourself that alone will help you make progress in your writing so that you can discover your rhythm, get those obstacles out of the way. And the pathway is clear for some progress. But secret two for getting some traction and clarity in your writing life, well, that's write a simple vision statement for your writing. How do I do that? Well, here are four things to keep in mind. This will not be a perfect process, by the way, because it's often more difficult to say less words and a vision statement is not long. And here are those tips. It's short, it's simple, it's hopeful, and it's not about you. Your writer's vision statement is about something beyond you. Remember, imperfect progress is still progress. Be kind to yourself if this feels difficult. And here's a pro tip. It feels difficult because it is difficult. So C.S. Lewis says this about writing in general, and it certainly applies to this exercise of coming up with a writer's vision statement. When it comes to writing, always prefer the plain direct word to the long vague one. Don't implement promises, but keep them. Well, here's some examples. Bear in mind, this is a vision statement, which means it's something you want to see, but it isn't yet all the way true. And by the way, it might even sound kind of impossible, but it's where you want to be after you achieve your goal or your mission. Here are some examples of vision statements that I found. They're not specifically writer vision statements, but they can give you an idea. Microsoft, a computer on every desk and in every home. At their founding, this is where they wanted to be as a company, what they wanted to be true because of their work. It doesn't give details, it doesn't tell how, but it casts a vision for what they want to be true because they exist. Another one, feeding America, a hunger-free America. Notice it's three to four words, simple, hopeful, and they're not about the company, they're about the people or the world. Now, what about you? Imagine for a moment that you're doing the work of writing the words you believe you are to write. You might not know exactly how, you might not know what it will lead to for you personally or the path to get there, but imagine that you're doing it. What do you hope that will mean for your reader? Like Dorothy saying about something beyond the moon, beyond the rain, this is bigger than a publishing deal. This is beyond your fears. This is beyond having a consistent writing routine, beyond your current obstacles that you may have. Your vision is not about what you do. Your vision is about what you want to be true because you said yes to your writing. It's what you want to happen as a result of what you do. It's always helpful to have examples. So I'll use another one and I'll use Hope Writers as an example. Here at Hope Writers, we help writers find and follow their path to sharing their hope-filled words with a reader. That's what we do. How do we do it? Well, we do it by teaching writers how to balance the art of writing with the business of publishing. But a vision statement is not what we do or even how we do it. Our vision statement is why we do it. This is what we hope to be true because of our work. 
our core focus is for writers to make progress, which means the vision for what we do is a world where writers don't quit or a world where writers keep writing. And if writers keep making progress, keep writing words, then that means more hope-filled words are shared more and more in the world. For us at Hope Writers, we've made it our job to help writers make progress because we believe writers are worth fighting for. And guess what? Your readers are worth writing for. What do you want to be true? Because you said yes to writing. That's the question you need to consider. Well, now you've named your obstacles. You know what's getting in your way. You've taken a shot maybe at a vision statement. At least you know what to look for and how to craft it. One that's short, simple, hopeful, and not about you. And by the way, always you want to keep this in mind from Gail Hyatt, that people lose their way when they lose their why. So you want to keep your why in mind. And with that, it's time to pull it all together and create a simple plan to bridge the gap between where you are and where you want to go. That brings us to step three or secret three, create a simple plan for your next writing step. Now, here's the thing. There's good news and bad news. The good news is you've got options. The bad news is one of your options is to do nothing. It's a real option. And I would love to help you decide what your next writing step could be, but you will have to leave the, but what abouts at the door? If you want clarity in your writing, you need a simple plan. And I have two rules for you to follow as you decide what your next step could be. And I promise you, they are both, I'm sure quite a bit counterintuitive rule. Number one, the way to get there is not to think bigger. In fact, that could be the biggest mistake that writers make. They think too big. They think one year from now I will be published, but they're not doing anything small today to make that happen. Now that might seem opposite of what I just said a minute ago, but here's the thing. When we're talking vision, like we did earlier, you got to think big. It's important. It's imperative. But when we're talking routine and next steps and making a plan for writing, you have to think small, just one next step. Rule number two, celebrate progress. You and I both know the best celebrations aren't done alone. You need people for that. As much as the stereotypes of the writing life will try to convince you otherwise, the path to get to where you want to go, the path to progress, it's lined with people. You cannot do this alone. So let's begin to build your simple plan based on what your biggest obstacle is. We'll go quickly. So hang with me. Number one, if you're looking for support or connection, and that's your biggest obstacle, then make a note. You need to think small and take one step to find some writing people. Your next step is to prioritize finding another writer to connect with, not right at this very moment, but write it down as your next step. Okay, we're not done yet. If you need direction, it will help you to find a simple path to follow. My best advice comes from Annie F. Downs. She says, chase the fun. If you need a path, don't start with the hard stuff. Start with the fun. For example, maybe for you, for the next 30 days, you choose one social media platform, just one, not five. Pick the one that's the most fun for you and focus only on that one. See what other people are doing, how they're doing it, and incorporate one idea a week into your own rhythm. Moving along, if you need more time, a simple writing routine could help. I start by incorporating writing into my morning routine. I write one page every morning. When the page is full, I stop. Sometimes I'll set a timer for 15 minutes and write however much I can. It's not great writing, but it gets the job done. When the timer goes off, I'm done for that session. I, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be progress, momentum. I don't have to write a certain number of words, but I'm just not allowed to do anything else until that timer goes off. Number four, if you need to make money, your first step, this might be, this might be tricky, but your first step might be a small commitment to learn something so that you can monetize later. That's often the case. Or perhaps you have something that you typically offer for free, but maybe it's time to get brave and begin to charge a small fee for it. Well, finally, if you're looking for confidence, 
one step of your plan could be to revisit that vision statement that you've written as a writer and ask yourself again, what do I hope to be true? Because I said yes to my writing. Your one next step, if you're lacking confidence, might be as simple as getting your eyes off yourself and setting your eyes on your reader. Ask, what is one thing I can do today to serve my reader well? Again, these were just tiny next steps that you could take. Of course, your next step is up to you. I imagine if you want to change the narrative and you want this to be the year that you finally make real progress, well, maybe you're hoping for a little more guidance along the way. You may already know of the free resources we offer at Hope Writers. We have a blog with a new post every week. We have our Instagram feed at Hope Writers and a Facebook page with lots of wonderful quotes and tips. In fact, that's how many of you maybe found your way here to this free workshop. And we're so glad that you did. But you're probably looking for more solid help than just an Instagram post or an inspirational quote. Maybe you're wondering, what exactly is Hope Writers and how does it work and what's included? Well, if you'd like to know more about Hope Writers and how Hope Writers can help you find your writing people, set simple, attainable writing goals, and finally make real progress in your writing, type yes in the comments. We'd love to tell you more. Let's get started. As one of the co-founders of this community, we've been in the business of helping writers find and follow their own path to sharing their words with a reader for more than five years now. We open our doors to new members a few times a year, and I am happy to say this is one of those times. We would love to be part of your writing plan. Maybe you've heard of Hope Writers before, but you've never paid close attention. You don't know exactly what we do or who we are. Maybe this is your first time hearing about us at all, and you're wondering, like, is it worth it to be a part of Hope Writers? Well, we would love to share more. We've anticipated what some of your questions will be, so I'll quickly walk you through what Hope Writers actually is and what we offer writers. First of all, we have a weekly teaching inside of Hope Writers. This is a big part of membership. Basically, every week, we host an hour-long writing workshop live at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. We call it Tuesday Teaching, and it's where we offer members the most up-to-date information from editors, agents, authors, book coaches, Instagram gurus, book launch coordinators, marketing professionals, and teachers of the craft of writing. We ask them the questions that you want to know. Right now, we have over 100 interviews available for you to watch right now, because even though we do them live, we, of course, record them all. So if you can't join us live, you get to watch them uh, as a recording later on uh, in our library. Not only do you get to participate in the teaching live, but our team is always there to facilitate your questions, making the teaching applicable specifically to you and your writing. Hope Writers member Cheryl minored in writing in college, and she was eager to get started in her career, but she says the lack of practicals that she learned from school left her feeling overwhelmed. She says, Tuesday teaching gives me what my writing classes didn't, structure for a writing plan, practicals on getting a book published, and helpful hints about platform, just to name a few. It's like you get to come to a live workshop every week, but instead of leaving your house for a writing conference, you get to do it from the comfort of your own home. Now, because we want to show you every element of Hope Writers clearly, I'll be sharing a complete list as we go. So you can see not only what you get as a member, but the value that that element is worth. Secondly, we have training and lots of it. A second component of membership is our six stage resource library. There's something for you, no matter where you are on the writing path. This is where all of our training resources live. Instead of heading to Google and having to search through resources that you may or may not be able to trust, you can head to your member resource library and find what you need based on the teacher, the topic, or the particular writing stage that you're in. When you join, you get instant access to over 130 teaching videos to help you make progress. Our library is organized by stage, so you'll know exactly what to start with and what to do next. Included in the member library are teaching videos from incredible authors like Annie F. Downs, New York Times bestselling author of That Sounds Fun, Beth Moore, who's a nationally known speaker, writer, and teacher, New York Times bestselling author Greg McEwen, author of the books Essentialism and Effortless, and over 100 other teachers. You'll find videos and how-to articles on topics like social media, book proposal writing, writing craft, and routines. 
When you log in as a new member, which you can do today, you'll find where it says, read me first, and we'll lead you through how to get the most out of your membership. We've listened to and served our writers and have recognized a common struggle. So many writers were overwhelmed or flat out quitting for one reason. It's not because they didn't have anything left to write. It's because they were trying to do all the right things in all the wrong order. This is a path. It's not a formula. A path may have ups, downs, turns, but on a path, you're moving in a direction. And as a writer, sometimes that's all you need to get unstuck. Our resource library is organized by stage. So that makes it easy to navigate. And we've made it easy to know exactly where to start. One resource in the library is a video interview with literary agent, Jenny Burke. And she says this about hope writers. She says, the work you're doing inside of Hope Writers is so important. You're helping so many writers, which in turn helps us in the publishing industry to have so much good quality content. She says, I've gotten proposals from Hope Writers that are so good, it's slowing down my process. Sorry, Jenny, just kidding. We're 0% sorry, not sorry at all. We're thrilled about that news. So that six-stage resource library and everything in it is completely available to you as a member of Hope Writers. The third component of your membership is access to our private member community. This is our online group where you can meet other writers, receive feedback and encouragement, ask your ungoogleable questions, and share links to your latest projects in our Friday shares. The community you'll discover will show you that you're not alone. You are in the right place. Having access to our online community of writers is a third component included with your membership. A fourth element of membership, you'll have the opportunity to join one of our guided hope circles. These are topic focused writing groups led by a trained hope writers guide whose goal is to help you make progress. You can choose from topics, including how to write a book proposal, how to grow your social media following, how to create a writing routine, and so much more. We have various topics to choose from, and these have specific start and end dates. A member who started a circle is author Jennifer Dukes Lee. She's been a member of Hope Writers for several years. She also works with Bethany House Publishers as an acquisitions editor. So she has sat on both sides of the writing and publishing table. She says this group has been a gift to her. Her Hope Circle was a safe place to process almost everything you could imagine. Jennifer says, and I love this line, for me, it's been a lifeline. Of course, signing up for a guided hope circle is also included in your membership as a member of Hope Writers. Another element of membership is our member directory. Every Hope Writer receives a basic profile in our member directory. For years, we tried to find a solution for our writers to more easily connect and find other writers geographically near them or who write about similar topics. So as a Hope Writer, you'll be able to create a profile on our public directory at hopewriters.net. The directory provides a professional place where you can direct people to learn more about you, your work, your website, and a way to connect with other writers who live near you or are working on similar projects. I hope you're starting to see all of the value and benefits that you automatically get when you join Hope Writers. This next one is extra special. Another perk of being a Hope Writers member is our Hope Writers Progress Planner, designed exclusively for members of Hope Writers and not available to anyone outside of our community. Our printed planner focuses on helping you make progress in your writing over 90 days. The Hope Writers Progress Planner is the culmination of more than five years of development and is perfectly crafted to help you organize your writing goals, process the feedback and instruction you receive as a member of Hope Writers and make the most of your writing time. We know you're going to love this planner, which retails for $39.95, but is yours for free when you join Hope Writers. Another perk of the planner is if you want even more help to develop that writing vision we talked about earlier, we have worksheets and guided questions to help you get clarity on your vision, goals, targets, and habits, all included inside that 90-day planner that's yours when you join. Well, we'll add the progress planner to our lovely collage of the value that you get as a Hope Writers member. Now, I mentioned at the beginning that if you stay to the end, we have a surprise and a fast action bonus, oh my, for you. And of course we do. 
Well, when you join Hope Writers during this training, you get access to some really special bonuses that will expire soon. The first one is the engaging content bundle. If you're struggling to create engaging content for your readers, we're here to help. We've created this exclusive launch bonus to help you craft engaging content. You get 31 writing prompts, a video training on growing your social media following, and another video training on how to create a lead magnet for your email list. You'll get free access to these three resources when you join before midnight on Tuesday. So of course, we're going to add the engaging content bundle to our list. And now we're really having fun because we have another bonus. Another bonus you'll get for free when you join is the time to write bundle. This will help you create writing routines and find time to write. Even within the most demanding schedule, life is busy, but these trainings will help you carve out the margin you need in order to share your words with the time that you have. This bonus expires midnight on Thursday. So when you join Hope Writers, you get access to all of these plus these bonuses. And if you join by Sunday night, there's one more bonus available to you. We've created a resource library of templates to help you along the writing path. Now this template kit includes a book proposal template, a query letter template, a social media checklist, social media tracker, a how to repurpose content template and a media kit template all to help save you time and bring clarity to your writing work. This bonus expires at midnight on Sunday. So when you join Hope Writers, you get access to our weekly trainings, the entire resource library, our online community, a guided hope circle, a profile in our member directory, a printed progress planner. And if you join by Sunday, you get all three of these fast action bonuses. All of this training, support, resources, community, and the printed planner has a value of over $2,000. But the good news is, of course, you won't have to invest over $2,000. You'll have complete access to everything that we've talked about today for $47 a month inside Hope Writers. All you need to do to get everything you see on the screen is go to hopewriters.com slash join. Hopewriters.com slash join. That's where you go to learn more. You can read all about it and join us today. You can log onto the library and start making progress in your writing right now. But I do have a couple more things to share with you before you go. I want to invite you to play worst case scenario about this decision. What is the worst thing that could happen? The worst thing that could happen is you join us. It's not for you. You cancel your membership. Is that the worst thing that could happen? Maybe, or maybe not. Maybe the worst thing is you don't join us. The doors close and you continue trying to write on your own with little support, no clear path and lots of questions. Or maybe the worst, worst case scenario is you set your writing aside altogether and never share your words at all. We want to make this a no brainer decision for you. And that's why we have a 60 day tried and applied guarantee to make this as easy as we can for you. You show us you engaged and that you did the work in our very specific checklist of action items. And if you still feel like we did not deliver what we said and you made zero progress, we'll gladly refund your membership fee. We believe in what we're offering, which is to say, I want to invite you to consider what is the best thing that could happen. This is a different question. Maybe you'll finally uncover your writing voice, or maybe you'll connect with other writers who get what you do, or maybe you'll make progress in your writing. What is the best thing that could happen? The healthy writing path is lined with people. We write better together. Our writers come from all walks of life. They serve all kinds of readers and they're at all stages on the writing path, but they are all hope writers. We believe there's goodness in the world. We believe we play a part. We believe there's room at the table for our voice, our words, our story. And we believe there's room for yours here too. We help any writer find and follow their own path to finally sharing their words with a reader. We would love to help you 
and we can start today. The truth is, you already know you've got options. Your first option is to do nothing and not take a leap of faith, which by the way, we're making 100% risk-free for you. Your second option is to invest in your writing today, a small fee compared to all the value you get in return, and just give it a shot. See if it'll work for you. If it doesn't, for whatever reason, we have a tried and applied money back guarantee. Well, here's everything you get. Once again, hopewriters.com slash join to join us. If you're on the fence, now is the time. Open a new browser window. Go to www.hopewriters.com slash join and get started. Remember, there's no risk. We have a 100% tried and applied money back guarantee. But the only way to know if it's right for you is to get started today. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I have so enjoyed our time together. And listen, if you continue to have questions as you think about this, as you talk with your people, you can always contact us in several ways. You can go to hopewriters.com slash join and click on the box that pops up. You can reply to one of our emails. There are so many people ready and waiting to answer any questions that you might have, but most of all, we're in your corner. We're cheering you on and we would love to be your writing people. Well, as we wrap up, next step is simple. You can either open a new window and type in hopewriters.com slash join to learn more and join us today, or just simply click the link in the chat. We've made it easy for you to learn all about Hope Writers and how we might help you along your writing path.